on earth. It was the toughest year of my life, but it wasn't enough for my publisher. The places I went to were all permanently inhabited. She argued that there must be nastier places on earth, even if humans couldn't live there all the time. She challenged me to go and find them. This is Greenland, the largest island in the world. Four-fifths of this wilderness is permanently covered by an ice cap, leaving only a small habitable fringe around its edge. Here, life is tough. The Inuit are Greenland's indigenous people. 80% of their food comes from the sea, but for nine months of the year, that sea is frozen. In the summer, when the sea ice melts, the Inuit hunters are faced with a short window of opportunity where they must gather all their food for the dark, frozen months ahead. One of the biggest prizes that nature can offer during this time is a narwhal, an almost mythical tusked whale that grows to the size of a minibus. The Inuit have been hunting them from kayaks for thousands of years. I certainly didn't want to kill one, but I really wanted to see one of these reclusive, aquatic unicorns. To do this, I was planning on joining a narwhal hunt, and on the way, I hoped to see whether I could survive for just a month in this inhospitable place, where the Inuit have survived for centuries. My final destination was Karnak, one of the most northern settlements on the planet, and from what I'd read, the best place to join a narwhal expedition but I was starting my journey 1,200 kilometers south in Kangalusawak. The narwhal hunters can spend up to a week on the ice, and if I was going to hold my own, some training seemed sensible. I was heading for the ice cap. I have to admit, I was slightly nervous, and the first man I met did nothing to reassure me. A Norwegian who had just abandoned an attempt to cross the ice cap, he didn't exactly look well. I've never ever been on an ice cap before. Um, is there any particular advice you'd give me before I go? Yeah, you can very easily get sunburn up there. Yeah. Only after one day. Yeah. And your lips too, they look quite painful. Yeah, when I was eating this morning, my lips were bleeding. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so, very sore. <laughs> okay, I need a lot of stuff on my yeah. lips then, yeah. <laughs> Stupidly, I'd never thought the sun was going to be a hazard here. But as I was ferried to the ice cap in a truck that looked like a giant Tonka toy, we passed through a landscape more like a desert than an Arctic wilderness. Eventually, the ice cap appeared like something out of a third-rate horror movie. It sat menacingly on the horizon, a great grey blob gently digesting yet another hillside. An hour later, the road ended, and for the next two and a half thousand kilometers, there was nothing but ice. Greenland is owned by Denmark, and my guide was a Danish postman who doubled as a search and rescue worker. 30 kilometers. So if we were to. Kim keep Peterson going, had agreed to give me a crash survival course. I found his accent innately comforting. When we are coming up to the spot where we have to make the exercises, mm -hmm. You stay with the snowmobiles, and I will tell you where you can walk. Okay. Just in case, be sure there is no crevasses or something like that under the snow. Okay, Kim, I promise not to move unless you tell me to. By the time we'd packed our gear onto the snowmobile, it was eight o'clock in the evening. Squashed in behind a postman I barely knew, I was heading into the heart of the second largest ice sheet in the world. This vast white nothingness is the result of the gradual accumulation of millions of individual snowflakes. It can be up to three kilometers thick and is continually moving seawards at a rate of 150 meters a year.
After three bone-chilling hours, we'd arrived. Quite where, Kim couldn't tell me. But it was now 11 o'clock at night, and the sun, which had dipped below the horizon an hour before, was already beginning to rise. The survival lesson began. We need at least uh, about uh, 70 centimeters or something like that. Then right. it would be a good place to yeah. make a shelter. Greenland's changeable weather systems mean that ferocious storms can appear out of nowhere. So knowing how to build a shelter was vital. It's very dry snow. Yeah. And uh, we cannot build an igloo about that. Oh, so no. the best I can see is uh, if we are making uh, what we call a snow grave. <laughs> yeah. A snow grave? Yeah, you're building your own grave. Okay. <laughs> It was now 1 a.m. and the lack of any proper darkness and the strenuous exercise were beginning to take their toll. But as soon as I stopped digging, the gentle breeze froze me to the core. I shuddered to think what a real storm would be like up here. Have you ever actually had to do this for real? Uh, I have done it once. Uh -huh. We were uh, two persons outside yeah. in a white out and we couldn't find home. In a whiteout, so you couldn't actually yeah, see anything. Yeah, we couldn't at all. see anything. How long did you have to stay in your hole? About 12 hours. That's a short time. That's a very short time. <laughs> Normally, you can stay there for one or two days. Really? Yes. The slabs of surface ice provided a suitably ecclesiastical roof. And even though the grave had taken us four hours to build, the exercise had at least kept us warm. <laughs> Hello, Nick. Oh, hello. Welcome to your new home. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's pretty comfy here. It, it looks. Oh, gosh, immediately you can feel the difference out of the wind. Yes. It's, it's really... incredible. Yeah, it is incredible. Yeah. There's enough space to get up. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, slot into bed. Yes. So what's the time now? Do you know? I, can't uh, I know think it's way. about three o'clock. Three o'clock. A.M. That's A.M. Yeah. Oh, I mean, you wouldn't know, would you? I mean, three A.M., three P.M. It just it's light <laughs> all the time. Yes. Do you find it difficult? I mean, do, do you wear eye patches at night? Or no? No, you can just sleep. Yeah. And how long have you been here? Seventeen years. Seventeen years. <laughs> it might take me a few years to get used to. <laughs> The ice grave was positively snug, but it did have one major design flaw, a lack of curtains. <sighs> Sorry for him. I mean, I just can't go to sleep because there isn't any night. <laughs> I don't know what time it is, but it's got to be the middle of the night. And it's bright sunshine. I feel like I've had a good introduction to the ice now. But this is the ice cap, it's rock solid ice. And as I move further north and towards the coast, it's going to start melting and breaking up. And although it's still ice, that's going to be a new challenge. I just hope I'm going to be able to get enough sleep to handle it. Before reaching Karnak, the narwhal hunter's mecca, I had an appointment in the small town of Ilulisat, just 250 kilometers north of Kangalusuak. West Greenland is the iceberg capital of the Northern Hemisphere, and this mini city is perched on the edge of an incredible glacier-filled fjord. During the summer, as the sea ice melts, icebergs carved from the glacier that are penned in through the winter are suddenly released into the ocean. And when I arrived, they were already on the move. I had come to Ilulisat to meet a woman called Rika. I'd read that the narwhal hunters are master kayakers. And if I was ever going to stand a chance of seeing a narwhal, it was a skill I'd have to learn. I'd been told that Rika was the woman for the job. Hi. Are you Rika? 
Yes, I am. How do you do? Nick. Fine. Nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you, too. And I understand you're kind enough to give me a lesson in kayak. Yes, I am. And you're the guy who has never been in a kayak before. Exactly <laughs> right, I feel, yeah. So. Rika kept her kayaks next door to her dogs. Much to my horror, I'd entered husky country. I've never been very keen on dogs, and these ones looked far from domestic. Okay, yeah. can you step down? Yeah. Now you have almost the position for carrying it. Really? What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on my head? Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I thought Rika was having me on, but half an hour later, having scrambled into a dry suit, I'd carried my kayak up the 500 odd metres to a small pond behind her house. Are we nearly there yet? <laughs> the climb alone nearly finished me, but this tall Viking beauty, who also happened to be three months pregnant, had little sympathy. It wasn't that tough, was it? <laughs> well, I'm exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> what we're going to do now is to introduce you to your biggest fear according to kayaking. And your biggest fear isn't the kayak, it's yourself. So <laughs> you need to understand that the kayak is going to help you. So you can just sit on the ring, on the top of the ring, okay. or behind the ring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I so can. now you got in. So take your oar. Yeah. And just hold it like you feel safe uh -huh. holding it. And now you're ready for Action. doing kayaking. Yeah. Good. Shouldn't we be in the water? <laughs> I was glad that Rika was starting me off in this paddling pool, but the water was still barely above freezing. It is very graceful, isn't it? Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wouldn't be graceful if you went in there. No. How long would you your, last? Yeah, huh? three minutes maximum, five three minutes. Three minutes? Yeah, something like that. We'll stay out of the water. <laughs> Unfortunately for me, Rika had other ideas. So now we are getting to the serious part, because um, you're going to, to try to make an Eskimo roll. And um, it's called an Eskimo roll because the Eskimos, they didn't know how to swim. So if they got out of the kayak, yeah. it would be the same as they would drown. Um, so they had to stay in the kayak and be able to turn over if they fall around. So um, I explained to you mm -hmm. what you should do, so let's try to see. Yeah. Hey, ready? Yep. Oh. Did we do it? <laughs> yeah, you I did it. I sort of don't remember going out. Oh. Got bad cramp, though. Oh, we hope it's not necessary for you to do it in the ocean. No. Despite the freezing water, the prospect of having a five-metre-long narwhal next to me, instead of a slightly nervous-looking Rika, ensured that it was a long practice session. Having just about thawed out from my dip, I decided to get some rest. But there was a problem. It was two o'clock in the morning, the sun was still up, and the curtains in my bedroom were pathetic. I'd had two hours sleep in the last 36 and I still couldn't nod off. I decided to go for a walk and get a glimpse of this mini city at rest. Not a chance. Even though the shops did have the decency to be closed, the town was still a hive of activity. Nobody seemed to be going to bed. It was all very...